the most is how do I ice my cake so smooth and buttercream? And I am working on that. So I wanted to show you what I've done. Actually, I'm lying. I'm not working on it right now. I'm refilming this beginning because I didn't like how I filmed it before. So I filmed it the other day and I wanted to show you how I do my buttercream cakes. A lot of what I learned from icing my buttercream cakes, I learned from the amazing Sharon Zambito over at Sugar Ed Productions. I found her about 10 years ago. Before she started her online school, she sold DVDs and I bought her Perfecting the Art of Buttercream DVD. And I thank her all the time because I would never be able to do my cakes like this if it wasn't for her. So I can link her online school below so you can check her out. I love you, Sharon. Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge with all of us cake people. But I have modified her technique to my liking, which you will most likely do after you watch this or some other videos on icing a buttercream cake. So if you want to see how I ice my buttercream cakes so smoothly and beautifully, please just keep on watching. So these are the tools that I use when I ice my cakes. I have a couple paper towels folded in half. I have a flat bench scraper that can sit flat and doesn't have like a lip down on this end. So I can link that below. I use two spatulas. Uh, I'm a little extra. I like the handle on this one, but when I go to level the cakes, I can't use this one because this has a little thing down there that would mess up the cakes. So I use this Atiko one to level the top of my cakes and this one to spread the icing on. I know it's a little extra, but it's what I do. Need a pot of almost boiling water. It's um, it has to be hot, but boiling water like singes my, the hair off my hands. Not that I need hair on my hands, but okay, that was weird. And a big bowl of buttercream. This is American buttercream icing. I can put the recipe below. And you also need your cake. This is a six inch strawberry cake with strawberry filling that is going to get iced with white buttercream. Delicious. I'm trying to find the best angle to do this so I'm not in the way and you can still see what I'm doing. I also forgot to say that I need a couple pieces of paper that I just kind of cut so they're not that long. And Viva paper towels because these don't have a pattern on them. So I cut one of the paper towels to this height so it's not too tall when I press it around the cake. So this is a six inch round cake. Right here on the front it says mermaid. That way when I have, when I look in the refrigerator and see all my other cakes, I know that this cake is the top tier for the mermaid cake or it's the middle tier or whatever it is. But anyway, um, okay, so to start, I just, I use my bigger handle spatula. You can use whatever spatula you want. And I start by putting some icing on the top of the cake and starting to spread it around. Trying to, you have to eyeball and make sure, I try to leave like a half inch of icing all around the cake. You don't want the icing to be too thick because then that's too much icing. And too thin that it's not enough. So you have to, you have to kind of know. And I think it's just from working at it so much to know, to be able to see how much icing that you're putting on there. And then I start putting it on the side. Now try to get my head out of the way. When I'm putting this first layer on the side of the cake, I'm pressing it all the way in, what they like to call a crumb coat. So just lightly, we're not doing a thick coat yet. We're just getting the icing on the side of the cake. Now, the reason I do this is because it helps prevent blowouts. A blowout is when you get icing and you get an air bubble under it and then all of a sudden you get a huge bubble in your icing and it ruins the cake and it used to happen to me all the time. But since I started doing this, I don't get the blowouts anymore. So what I do, I do a thin coat of icing first, pressed, pressed all the way against the cake. And then right after that, don't give the icing time to crust or anything, I'm gonna put this other thicker layer of icing on the outside. That way the icing doesn't have any air underneath it and you're not going to get that, that dreaded freaking air bubble that used to always happen to me 
it used to always be on the front of the cake it was the worst so by having the thinner layer of icing and then your thicker layer which is only about a half inch thick by having that thinner layer of icing first before your thicker layer the thicker layer is adhere like everything's adhering together and you have less air getting underneath it now you can't just slap all this icing on you have to make sure you're pushing it sorry pushing it against the other icing so you're not getting any air underneath it if you get air you're going to get an air bubble and it's the worst so just keep taking some icing and spreading it around and what we're going to do is bring the icing over the top of the cake so just get it on the sides to start, making sure you're keeping it about a half inch, a quarter inch to a half inch thick. So we're gonna take some of this off too as we start to smooth it. Now I'm getting to, towards the top of the cake and we're bringing the icing over the top of the cake. So I don't know if you could tell right here, but I'll spin it around. The icing comes over the top of the cake. We're gonna take all of that off to get a sharp edge. There are icing tips that you can use that to put icing on the cake faster. I've just been doing it this way for so long. It's been like, I don't know. I, I did it right after I started working on cake. So coming on 15 years or something like that. I've just been doing it this way. This way works for me. And this is what I like to do. So can't, can't teach an old dog new tricks. I just like the way I do it. So now there's the icing all the way on the cake. Now some of the part that's sticking over the top, I want to take some of that icing off because when I go to level it, this is a lot of icing up here. So I'm just going to take a little bit off and I still leave it coming over the top of the cake. Just scraping a little bit. So I got rid of some of that extra icing. You can see it still comes over the top of the cake, but it's just not as much as it was before. That's an extra step that I take. You don't have to do that. It's what works for me. So now I take one of the folded paper towels and the bench scraper. I'm going to dip the bench scraper in the hot water to get this metal hot. Wipe off the water and use the heat from the bench scraper to start to scrape the icing off. I am holding the bench scraper perfectly straight up and down. It's got to be up and down straight to get the straight sides. If you hold it at an angle, if you hold it out here, your icing is going to come out like that. It's not going to be straight. If you hold it too far out, it's, you know, you have to, you have to eyeball it and make sure you're holding it straight up and down. So keep doing the same thing. I'm dipping the bench scraper in the water, wiping it off, and then wiping it on the cake. Get rid of the excess icing. Dip this back in the water to get the metal hot. Wipe the water off, and then start again. I start spinning it a little, and then I touch it on the cake using pressure. You're taking icing off. There's icing coming off as you're doing it. So. I did put the icing on a little thicker than I usually do, so I'm going to try to take some of that off. So keep repeating the process, trying to make sure that the bench scraper is straight up and down. Now you can tell by looking at your cake. Get down level and spin it around and see how straight it is on the sides. Then you can tell which way you're holding the scraper wrong, or if, if you're holding the scraper wrong. And this looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna go over one more time. Wipe that off and set this aside. So now what I do is I take the Viva paper towel that I cut, and there's a softer side and there's a rougher side to it. I push the softer side up against the cake. So laying the paper towel against the cake and lightly rubbing it up and down. This gets rid of some of the imperfections that are in the cake. So peeling it off and just going around the whole cake 
lightly rubbing up and down. This will put a small pattern in the cake, but we will remove that a little later. Now there's some holes in here, pock marks. I can show you how to fix that later as well. So it's not gonna be perfect yet. We're just in the process of getting it to be smooth and pretty. Okay. I also forgot to say that you want a fondant smoother as well. I can link this below. So I take this now and I'm applying a little bit of pressure. Not too much because you don't want to distort the icing. But applying pressure to try to get the icing smoother. Just working in small sections. So now this is where I start to level off the cake. I eyeball it right now because I've been doing this for so long, I don't need help to get a straight line. But what I used to do, and this is thanks to Sharon Zambito over at Sugar Ed Productions where I learned how to do so many things from her and I love her so much is I have a bunch of pre-cut pieces of cardboard. And what I used to do is find one, I numbered them, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And I just numbered them and I would hold it up against the cake to see which one came to the top of the cake. Now the icing is gonna come over it because the icing comes over the cake. So you don't want it all the way up here. You want it down a little bit to the top of the cake on the inside. So what you can do, I would think that 11 is probably the best. Whoops, just messed that up. Awesome. So if you're gonna use this method, I have this cardboard and what you can do is lightly press the top, not the rest of, the, not the rest of it. Just let the bottom sit on the cake board and press the top. I hope my head's not in the way this whole time I'm talking. Press the top part of it against the cake so you can get a line that you're going to trace around the cake, okay? I don't do it that way. You can, you can keep pushing it the whole way around so you can have a line to follow. I don't need that. Not to brag, but I've been doing this for so long that I'm just gonna eyeball it. Now, this is why I like to use this Atiko spatula because I'm gonna push this icing back and when I push it back, if I pushed it back with this spatula, this bottom notch is gonna hit the cake and mess it up. This doesn't have that, so this is why I like to use it. So what I do, I'm going to dip this in the hot water, wipe it off, and keep the spatula level. I want it straight. If I do it like this on an angle, the buttercream is not gonna be straight. You have to sit down low, as low as you can, and be, well, sit, you have to sit down to eye level and look at the cake and start, and start pressing the buttercream back. So you're gonna to start to get an edge on the cake. So we're gonna go around and just start lightly taking the buttercream off, wiping it back in the bowl, dipping this in the hot water, wiping it off and repeating the process. See that line I made earlier is a little too low, so I'll fix that in a little bit. So keep doing the same thing. See, I'm keeping this perfectly straight. And I start to push the icing back and then I bend, kind of, I, I push it. Why is it so hard to explain? I push it back straight and then I kind of lift it and, and wipe it away. It's just the way I do it. You can find what works best for you. So keep repeating the process.
Okay. So now we got the top part off. I'm going to try to fix these little imperfections that I made. So I'm going to put the Viva paper towel back on the cake, wipe it a little bit, and then use the fondant smoother. And hopefully those lines, yeah, the lines are starting to go away. So I will, ref I will refine this as I'm going on. With American buttercream, it does form a crust and then you can work with it a little easier. So just let this sit for about five minutes to let it crust and then we will continue. So now that this cake has crusted, I can continue to smooth it out a little more. So I take the food grade paper that I have and I take my fondant smoother and I'm going to put the paper against the cake and you have to give it good pressure but it can't be too much so it's that happy medium that you have to find of you know too much and too little but what we're doing now is we're taking out the marks that the Viva paper towel left on the cake so we can get it perfectly smooth if the icing starts to get the paper a little greasy, I turn it over and use the other side. And if the paper starts sticking to the cake, then just get another sheet. And that looks pretty good. So now the final step that I do is I'm going to take some hot water. This is a little weird, but I scoop a little bit of it out so there's still water on top of the spatula. Or you could use a spoon. I just use a spatula. Keep a steady hand. Drop some of the hot water on top of the cake and then I'm going to smooth that around. This gets rid of any marks, and I'm gonna repeat the process, adding a little more water as I have to. But this is gonna get rid of any spatula marks that you have on top of your cake. I come almost to the edge, and then when I get most of the center done, now I come from the edge and go in. So dip the hot water. I keep a little bit of water on the back of the spatula, not too much because you don't want it to drip down the side of the cake and I just wipe it in from the outside in. Keep on dipping it back in the water using the hot water to melt the buttercream and make it smooth and pretty and perfect. So 
here's your ice cake. There are still some imperfections in it. So what I want to do is put this in the refrigerator to let this set, let the icing get hard. Then I'll be able to spackle all these imperfections away. Well, I will put it in the fridge for about a half hour and then I will come back and show you what I do. So my cake's been in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and the icing is now solid. So I can patch up these little pock marks that I have in here. I have a little bit of the white buttercream icing and this is a spatula that came in a Wilton flower forming tool set. The handle broke so long ago and I've been taping it together because I don't feel like buying a whole other set. But I love this little spatula. I just take a little bit of the icing and I'm basically just going to spackle the holes. Using light pressure, because the icing is still not completely solid. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the hot water on the end of the spatula just to get rid of any marks that the icing would have left on the side of the cake. Dipping this in the hot water and then wiping it again. Here's another one here. A little bit of icing on here. Just spackle the hole. And up here as well. And then first, get rid of the extra icing. And then use some hot water to get rid of any imperfections. There you go. There's your perfectly iced, beautiful buttercream cake. So here you go. Here's your beautifully perfect, smooth iced buttercream cake that a lot of people are gonna think it's fondant and it's not. And they're gonna say how amazing you are and you're gonna say thank you, thank you. I usually ice one day and then I put them in the refrigerator overnight before I start to stack and decorate them. I did a video on stacking that I can link below. If you have any questions, just leave them below and I will answer them as soon as I can. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I have my website. If you want to see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and I will see you on the next one. Bye.